Your Gen AI model is not going to replace me. That's a blog post I came across today and it says hopefully in the title as well. So it's an interesting blog post. I just had a quick look at the outline itself. So it looks good, but I'm going to go into the actual blog with you guys in this video. I'll leave the link for the blog as well in the description so that you can check it out. But again, just like any other video, hopefully you would learn something new from my perspective and things I have to say about this. So in the last three weeks, I fixed a couple of performance issues that potentially saved the company a few hundred thousand dollars. I'm a contractor, so I don't get any bonuses. How did I find these issues? I just had a gut feeling that something was wrong with the system. In my 20 years of experience, I've seen plenty of applications and I knew this system throughput had a bottleneck somewhere. I created a test scenario, way to measure throughput, started a visual VM, combined dozens of threads, stack traces, memory, and CPU snapshots. I found the issues, write fixes, wrote fixes, and ran on everything, and boom, more than 10x throughput. Remember, technically these weren't bugs. All the unit and integration tests passed, every test passed, linters passed, static code analysis passed, and several rounds of code reviews passed. The issues were two unsuspecting lines of code with no evident problems. So again, because this is like a proper system level debugging, which is usually like not possible just with prompting because prompting can just give you input and output in a text-based form. These systems require you to spin up multiple tools. For example, in this case, he started a visual VM instance with snapshot taking and analyzing those snapshots. It's obviously right now with the state of AI, which we have, it's not possible because even though these models are really good with text to text communication, they usually cannot do anything remotely multimedia on a better scale than humans right for example just taking a heap dump and analyzing it with some tools automatically on their own sure there are screenshot apis and things they can do semi-autonomously but still a lot of the ai in in the way we say it is inside text to text communication so he says that your devin and cursor and deep seek cannot do what I do. So <laughs> he says that if you give me infinite context window and another 500 billion <laughs> to burn a few nuclear reactors, we can do it, bro. So, so yeah, I mean, again, like this is also something, you know, I've been saying that, you know, you need to have like an infinite memory with these AI models and uh, smart enough. I think this is one of the videos which I created that uh, AI agents is not the future the way it is today. Th that is where I also discussed that these infinite context window and the smartness is the only thing that is supposedly not is going to replace like real use cases of developers and anything before that it's just like making you efficient not replacing you so he says that gen ai is in the part to agi even if it happens you cannot replace my experience sensitivity years of knowledge long nights blah 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 your slop ai agents have already devoured all the technical books the documentation and every piece of open source in the world illegally one may suspect and still cannot replace a developer. So this is this is an interesting chain of thought, right? Because if you think about it, even the models for today, which are getting released, O3 Mini High, for example, or all these models, they must have been trained on every single piece of documentation and book, which is at least publicly or even in a lot of cases, privately available. And yes, I know for a fact, these models are great and they are impressive, but they cannot replace you. And I, for one, feel that putting a layer of tooling around it using Cursor or, you know, Windsurf or all these tools and systems is not the solution because I've used these and they cannot work in a fully autonomous manner. You still have to have a human hand at almost all the times and they would make mistakes occasionally. This is a good point in general that because these models, at least the recent ones now, have probably consumed everything there is to be. And if they're still not good as a normal developer in terms of operating the tools, not in terms of knowledge, in terms of just generally operating the tools, then of course you cannot expect this model to replace you, right? Bro, Gumroad is no longer hiring junior developers. Yes, apparently. Also, everyone is complaining about how bad the site is now. So if you look at some of these tweets which are there, you would see that a lot of people are complaining that Gumroad in general has become worse. Uh, the support is becoming worse. They're Pricing in general is becoming worse and it's a platform which you probably don't want to use in near future. You're a senior developer, no one says we can replace you. Mark only said that we are going to replace all the mid-level engineers by 2025. So for a minute, I'll humor Zuckerberg's idea that he'll be able to replace all the mid-level engineers by 2025. Then who will progress to senior engineer? Who is going to review the that the slop splurge generator didn't hallucinate again and FUBAR the entire code base and infrastructure. We, the current generation of senior developers, are going to retire in the next 20 years. And if we are going, and we are going to the 
bank smiling with all the money we'll make fixing gen ai slob bugs who will replace us if you're not hiring developers anymore so yeah that is true i i feel the answer to this probably is that it's just that the bar would increase in terms of what kind of developer you consider a mid-level developer mid-level engineer because if your mid-level engineer is not better than the AI system that you're using in the company, then obviously they will not hire you. They will hire you or hire somebody who is just maybe slightly just better than an AI system, right? They understand bits and nuances of back end, front end, all of that. Freshers are going to be having a really hard time. So that only means that you have to be good enough in what you're doing. And that has been true for a very long time, right? I don't know like how half of the world really operates on being just a fresher. And that's it. That's all they do. I have never been able to understand even pre AI, like how can you be a programmer and not be improving yourself every day or every week right so that becomes more important than ever in this ai age humans make mistakes too but humans get tired your gen ai can produce garbage code at speed and efficiency that no human can compete also humans can learn with some basic feedback your gen ai knows all the open source code in the world and still produces manure humans need 2400 calories per day and some caffeine your gen ai needs nuclear reactors I mean, basic feedback is also available in AI models. You can tell it that this is right, this is wrong. My only issue with them is that the next time I start a chat or the next time I come back, it doesn't remember it, anything, right? It's it's That's one of the ways we interact with humans that if I'm, let's say, if I'm going to do something to a human, for example, telling them that this is a bad way to do or this is a good way to do, that's going to stay with them maybe for the rest of their life if delivered in a powerful manner. But with these AI systems, it's it's just you know one another con one other conversation in their hundreds or thousands of you know data centers in the world so i think that is a bigger issue than uh, what is written here but yeah i mean Gen AI is like a bicycle, it makes you go fast, be more productive. Productive. My bicycle is my computer, I'm in complete control, it goes as fast as I want and I get fitter when I use it. Gen AI is like a rusty roller coaster, it may go fast, but it's going to kill us at some point. It isn't making developers more productive, it's making them worse and dependent on slop generators. So this is partially true. I would say this is true because if you are a new developer and you are just using AI, AI, AI to generate stuff, then obviously it's gonna backfire on you so bad that you don't don't understand what's going to happen you are going to land in a position where there is so much code generated by these ai generators and you don't understand now that what to do with it right and maybe like the model at some point just loses the context of everything so obviously this is only making developers more productive who are developers in the first place who are good developers take your copium tank old man gen ai is the future and it'll replace you anyway you slop peddlers are pushing very hard on your slop machines to the CEO so that they can replace us. And I totally get it. We ID workers as a class are annoying. I worked as a team lead and I have hired developers. Dealing with developers suck. We are rude, weird. Some do not shower. <laughs> We are centric, maybe on the spectrum. We are always late, always complain about meetings, charge a lot of money, and then leave the company on a whimper. But you're going to regret it. The quality of product is going to suffer and your clients are going to leave. A very powerful statement, right? So if you, obviously, if your product sucks, it doesn't matter what tools or what things you use. Because if you look at these AI systems in general, these are like a means to an end, at least for the tech side of people, right? It's a means to an end to build a better product, to build a better business. And if it does not allow you to achieve it, and if it gives you the the impression of that you are almost achieving it that's far more dangerous because giving it as an impression that you are about to get a nice product is far 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 more dangerous than just realizing it up front that you know this system doesn't work because with the former thing you would just keep on pouring more and more money time energy resources only to figure out after wasting so much time that this would not work at our scale right this problem is too complex to be solved by a current ai or in general any ai so his advice to for the young developers is to stop this right now you don't need ai tools your brain is beautiful a gift from god use it train it yeah write your own code it's simple easy and fun generations before you did it gen ai or agi if it happens will not have what you have the human Human experience. Well, Gen AI can write bad code faster than you, so what? Over the years, we have developed high level languages, libraries, patterns, and techniques because we don't want to write too much code. We have physical limitations, get tired, and sometimes forget things, so we develop the right abstractions. You don't need to pay these peddlers, your brain is more powerful than any Gen AI copyright infringement machine. So, I mean, overall, I get the idea of the blog, I get the vibe, and I agree with a 
bunch of parts with this but i still feel like as a developer or as somebody you should once in a while try to use these tools with some of the hardest problems you have faced like maybe create a bunch of prompts see which model does what because that is how i discovered like deep sea car one is like a really good model with chain of thought and everything because if not anything, if not doing the coding part for you, they can help you learn programming in a better way, right? These models are great. They have their value and they have their place in the humanities timeline. And this would keep on increasing no matter how hard either of the web, either of the sites pushes. Like, you know, AI models are bad, AI models are good. I feel that this is a Pandora's box that we have opened now and there is no going back. These models are here to stay. These models are here to impact you in every single dimension, not only just IT, but in general for general public general people who need help on a day-to-day -day basis these models are here to stay so it's best to don't do a cold turkey that is not something i would recommend but i would recommend that you do not over obsess with these models as a young developer who's learning use them from an education point of view not from an app building and code generation point of view where you don't have any idea what's going on so yeah that's pretty much it for this video hopefully you liked it make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel i will see you in the next one really soon